Welcome to 7 Questions. Every episode, we tag up with industry experts and ask them the same 7 questions. Today's guest is an incredible education innovator and TED Talk speaker from Austin, Texas. There, he works at a hybrid school and tech startup, completely reshaping the way that we think about education. He's at the forefront of finding new ways to integrate technologies like virtual reality, app development, and blockchain into the classroom. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Yates. Mike, welcome to the show. How's it going, man? Hey. What's up, man? I'm good. How are you? Do you have any messages for anybody that's thinking about moving to Austin? I do. Don't. Don't come here. <laughs> do not come here. Uh, there's too many people. Tell me a little about your TED Talk. Yeah, so my TED Talk is that no matter what group of students or people I stood in front of, I would share this message. But if you just search Mike Yates TED Talk, it'll come up. The greatest lesson that I've ever learned is about personal value. So as an educator, as a teacher, you fall into these really dangerous mindsets that like you owe something to society. And, and I think it's really important that we remind educators that like you are a business professional and your school works just like a company does. And you need to move with, within that structure. A friend of mine, we we're talking about this, this struggle and he was like, Mike, everything you do at that school, they pay you for. Everything. Because of that, you owe them nothing. You owe society nothing. You're paying that debt. Like you've given your life to education. If, if you're a teacher and your demand as to whether you're going to come back to that school or not is like, I need five VR sets, your class is now all of a sudden better. And, and once I had that freedom, it gave me a control of my career and what I did both inside and out of the classroom. Right now I'm learning the, the power of leveraging online communities. On LinkedIn, there's a guy, his name's Tim Salau. I have like been consuming Tim's content because he's a master community builder. And, and he runs the largest online community of professionals who want to be mentored. That's what struck me about Tim specifically is I would see him on LinkedIn. And there was one post, that, but the gist of what he said was, I don't want anything from you, but to know what makes you dig to know what makes you go. And like, neither of us are selling anything. Neither of us are recruiting the other one. Like we're actually just two professionals in the same field trying to make the field better. And, and community building for me gives me the context and the skills to be able to move as I need. Let me ask you this. There are people out there watching this. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give them on building relationships? So two things, authenticity and boldness. You need to find a person that will tell you that your resume sucks. Like you need a person who's going to be honest with you. The second thing is boldness. If you work with somebody and you're like, man, that person is trailblazing, it does not hurt you to send that person a message and be like, hey, let's connect. When I started teaching, I started teaching at a private school, and it was because I was not certified. So I decided, you know, I'm going to go get my certification. I applied to to do Teach for America. I thought, like, yeah, this is this is going to be great for me. We're on vacation. We're in Florida. We're on the beach. And I get this email from Teach for America that says, no, we're not going to take you. I remember this sinking feeling that I felt. My dream is gone. And And then I realized... Teach for America is not the only teaching fellowship in America. So I started researching other teaching fellowships. And the next one I applied to, I got into. So I needed to I needed Teach for America to reject me so that I could find this other program. He has this concept of brick walls. And he says, Brick walls are not there to keep us out. The brick walls are there to give us a chance to show how badly we want something. It's funny how sometimes in life, what you think is the biggest trampoline to get you where you want to go turns out to be, you know, a, a mistake. And that leads you to the launch pad. I don't know who said this. I don't know who to credit to. So I'll just credit to myself. Um, <laughs> get to failure as fast as possible mm -hmm. so I can iterate, change, and move on, right? Obviously, I, I think Tim from Mentors and Mentees, uh, he's master community builder, somebody that I don't know well. But I, I do think people should follow her. Sarah Kay, she's a, she's a poet. Her perspectives on sort of like life and like being a poet who also runs her own organization, which is called Project Voice. The things that Project Voice does for kids through poetry um, is remarkable. So 
So Good They Can't Ignore You by Cal Newport. And one of the main things it does that sort of realigns your focus on what you personally are doing for the company that you work for. It's easy to get caught up in like where you're not and what you're not doing, but you should focus on what you personally can do to advance the mission of the company. Mm. Not like how you can move up in the ranks because by focusing on advancing the mission of the company, you become more valuable and you learn more. Deep Work is another one of his books. Um, I, I am fixated on expanding my capacity to work. I actually listened to a Gary V podcast and a guy asked him, he's like, how, how do I uh, expand my capacity to work? He said, cut out all leisure and just work. And then I realized if you want to be successful, if you want to take yourself from point A to point B, the thing that's in between point A and point B is always work. If you have things like certain shows playing video games that keep you distracted. My iteration of this is I look at my day and I figure out how to maximize the hours that I'm spending doing everything, right? I took a personal inventory of like what's really important to me and and what are my goals? Like, where, where do I really want to be? And I think it's become popular in, like, in schools and, and even amongst like professional mixers for people to say things like, where do you want to be in five years? But they never ask you, like, what's the price? The coolest pieces of advice I ever heard actually came from Dave Chappelle, where he said that before he went into stand-up, when he's 14, his dad told him, name your price. And if you ever have to pay more than the price that you named, get out of it. And I, I took that and, and applied it in several different ways to my life. Doing this personal audit, I asked myself the question, what's your price and what are you willing to give up or to do so that you can make this happen? I am looking for people who want to have a conversation about education. I, I think that the field of education does, like we never talk about innovating the space. If you work in education or if you work outside of education and you're interested in having these conversations, connect with me on LinkedIn. I don't want a job. I don't want anything from you. I just want to talk <laughs> about education. That's all the time we've got for today, folks. I'd be remiss if I didn't at least share this story. When John Maxwell first taught me these seven questions, he told me the, the questions are important, but the answers are where the value is. My goal in bringing this series to you is not just to bring you the content of the video, but also all the individual tools that are discussed in them. In the description below, you will find all the links to the tools and resources that Mike and I have just discussed right now. Each and every week, you can think of seven questions, not just as an amazing discussion, but as a toolbox for life. Make sure you head over to Twitter and look at at just Mike Yates so that you can see his amazing video and written content as well. Until next time, be blessed.